We're starting down on our back, soles of our feet together, knees out wide, starting to <clears throat> connect with the breath. We're breathing into a four count, holding to a four count, and exhaling to a four count. And as you breathe, breathe in through the belly, up through the ribs, the lungs, all the way to the tops of your throats. And then exhale in the opposite direction from the tops of your throats down through the ribs, the lungs, all the way to your bellies, as though you're wringing water from a washcloth, bringing navel into spine. Again, we're going to start practice with this beautiful gong. And I want to remind you that if you have a bolster and a block, that's wonderful, or just a blanket that's folded so that you can place it the length of your spine with a block for your head or a pillow for your head. If you don't, you can also just be flat on the mat. <clears throat> so let's get started. So this is actually the root chakra. We're going to go ahead and start these over so that we can go through all of our chakras with Stephen. And let me quickly go back to our, so we're starting the first one. So this is the root one, we were on the second. <clears throat> Again, starting to connect with the breath, Breathing into a four count, holding to a four count, and exhaling to a four count. And as you breathe, breathe in through the belly, up through the ribs, the lungs, all the way to the tops of your throats. And then exhale in the opposite direction from the tops of your throats down through the ribs, the lungs all the way to your bellies as though you're wringing water from a washcloth bringing navel into spine again perhaps place your right hands on your bellies and your left hands on your hearts to track the breath as it moves through your bodies and before we begin remember that you can always draw those knees back to center as you inhale and you can allow them to fall open with gravity as you exhale maybe just place the soles of your feet on the mat with your knees up if this is too uncomfortable for you and let's begin inhale two three four hold two three four and exhale two three four again inhale two three four hold two three four and exhale two One more time, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Now allow your breathing to come naturally to its own rhythm. Allow the warmth of your breath to go to any area of your body that is tense or sore and allow the breath to relieve the tension or soreness that is there. 
Imagine your breath gathering up all of the tension and soreness in your bodies and breathing it out so that you begin to feel peaceful and relaxed. Again, this is the second chakra. So this is <clears throat> started with the root. Again, we're in the sacral right now. We'll be moving up to the solar plexus as well as to the heart, to the throat, to the third eye, and then all the way up to our crown chakra. Again, think of an intention that you'd like to set for this practice. This intention could be physical, mental, or spiritual. And it could be for you or for someone you love. Again, maybe your child in spirit or a loved one in spirit. Seal that intention with one deep inhale. And one deep exhale. Again, inhale those knees and arms to center. Exhale as you roll over onto the right side in the fetal position. Remain here for a few breaths. Again, the sacral chakra is orange. So it's burnt orange. The root chakra is red, a beautiful, vibrant red. <clears throat> as we move up to the solar plexus, it's a beautiful lemon yellow. Heart chakra is emerald green. Throat chakra is a turquoise color in between green and blue. And then as we're moving up, our third eye is indigo colored. And as we get to the tops, the crowns of our heads, ultraviolet. So as you're listening to this beautiful music by Stephen Halpern, just imagine that white light rising through each chakra. Again, breathing in and out. Slowly roll over, push up with your hands, remove your block and your bolster, but be Keep them handy so that we can use them later on. Draw those knees in for a hug. Rock back and forth. Massage your lower backs and your kidneys. And again, maybe grab, grab opposite elbows if this is in your practice. Again, <clears throat> breathing in and out as we do. Good job. And then from here, let's go ahead and inhale first. And exhale as you extend your legs all the way down to the end of the mat. Oh. <clears throat> inhale those arms up overhead. And tighten the muscles throughout your body. So we're tightening up all of our facial muscles, every single muscle, our toes, our feet, our ankles, our calves, our thighs, our hips, our lower backs, coming up through the torso, tense as much as you can, tensing up your shoulders, your arms, tensing up those throat mus muscles as well as your jaw, your cheeks, your forehead, all the way up your arms to your fingers. Tense, 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 tense. And then exhale as you draw those knees in. Rock back and forth. Massage your lower backs. Good job. Let's do that one more time. Inhale as you extend those legs and arms above you. Legs below you. And then exhale as you walk your feet all the way over to the right. Arms go to the right as well. <clears throat> We're in crescent on the floor. So stop by in crescent. We're opening up 
those obliques on the left side, releasing toxins as we do, keeping that left shoulder down, that left hip down, don't turn towards the right. Again, breathing in and out. Again, your breath is the, is the power that you have. That breath activates, releasing those toxins. <clears throat> Getting rid of them. And maybe find some space to move into. If this is in your practice, move even closer to the wall or the space on the right. Inhale back to center. Again, stretching out. And exhale as you walk your hands and your feet as far as you can to the left. Again, opening up those right obliques, breathing in and out. Keeping that right shoulder down, keeping that right hip down. And smile, we're releasing toxins that may exist there. Maybe find some space as you breathe to move even farther into this asana, into this yoga pose. your lower backs and your kidneys and smile. It's Thursday. The weekend is coming. We're going to go spend the week of the day with my parents. I'm so excited about this. Place the soles of your feet on the mat as wide as the mat. Knees are up, arms are out, east and west. Inhale first. Exhale as your knees fall down to the left as far as you can. Again, you can use your bolster or your block underneath your thighs if this is something that's in your practice. We're working towards getting them all the way down to the mat, all the way down to the floor. And again, if you'd like to take that left foot and place it on your right thigh for a deeper stretch, don't feel like you have to. Look off to the right in windshield wipers. Again, breathing in and out as we open up our hips, open up our thighs. I don't know how many of you Watch the Oscars, we didn't watch the Oscars, but one of the films that was chosen as the best foreign film uh, for an Oscar was Anatomy of a Fall and takes place in Grenoble in France. And it's um, a murder mystery. It's interesting, it takes two hours. It's a long film, but there's a little boy in there, his name is Milo, Milo in French. And it's about a, a young man who's, who's blind, but he actually isn't. And they couldn't find anyone to play the role. He just did such a fabulous job. He's gotten a César in France for best young actor. He's just really, really good at what he does. But even more important, there was a dog in the movie. He's an Australian Shepherd. He had the most beautiful, beautiful blue eyes. And he was at the Oscars and everyone was kind of wondering what that dog was doing there. And his name is Snoop in the movie and he's the seeing, do seeing eye dog for this, for this um, boy. It's worth seeing the movie for the two of them. I really think that they're both wonderful. 
Again, breathing in and out. Opening up your hips as you do. Irene said that she watched a fabulous movie with her husband Tony yesterday called American Fiction. She thinks that that's also a great movie to see. Slowly release that left foot. Inhale your knees back to center. And exhale down to the right again. In windshield wipers, you can either stay here, maybe place a bolster or a block underneath your thighs. Or you can also place that right foot on top of your left thigh. Again, in windshield wipers. Breathing in and out as you do. in this movie, not hard, but difficult, was that the main actor, actress, um, but I call them actors, but she, um, she is German, but she was speaking English in the movie, and then everyone else was speaking French, unless they were speaking to her, so there were subtitles, and then there were and I just feel like it would be so nice to be able to do these movies. There's lots of movies now coming out where it's all in, it's, it's all mixed up, but sometimes there are three different languages in the movie. You have to keep remembering if you're gonna have to use the subtitles, but I would have preferred that it was all in French. It would have been a little bit less, um, maybe disjunct disjuncted. I think that that's a hard thing to follow. But it was, it was very, very well done. Slowly release that right foot. Inhale those knees back to center. Draw them in for a hug. Rock back and forth. Again, shake it off. <clears throat> Getting rid of that tension in your hips. From windshield wipers, good job. here we're going to uh, inhale first and exhale as you extend that right leg hopefully not kicking a table and knocking your chakra tree over inhale as you interlace your fingers exhale as you drag that right thigh in flexing both feet Opening up your thigh, opening up your hips as well. Inhale out. Exhale, drag that calf and your thigh in as close as you can to your chest. Again, shoulders back and down. Inhale out. Exhale, draw that knee in. Inhale out. That left arm goes up overhead. And exhale as you drag that knee over to the right. We're in a full body twist. If this is too much, you can always have a bolster or a block underneath that knee. Again, this is a full body twist, dragging that left shoulder down towards the mat. You can also inhale first and exhale as you bend that right knee, grabbing onto your right ankle, to your right 
right toes or using a strap on that right ankle. Please don't feel like you have to do this. You can stay where you are. You're already in a full body twist. This is a twist with a bind. You can also inhale first and exhale as you extend that left leg. Grab onto your toes. Again, maybe using a bolster or a block underneath that left leg. Possibly using a strap if this is in your practice. And smile. It's Thursday. Opening up as much as possible. Breathing in and out as you do. And I feel so grateful for these asanas because my hip is completely fine now. And I know that it was through the different asanas that we were doing during practice in yoga that got me healed so quickly. The fact that I feel like that hip might be even stronger than my other hip. I also was putting CBD um, lotion on it and I was heating it at night. And I think that, that both of those things were also very helpful. It's funny because my husband has lower back pain and I keep telling him just put the CBD stuff on and then put the heat on it, it'll help so much. And he just thinks that that's not a possibility for him, which is kind of funny. Inhale. Back to center. These cures existed long before we were here. Wrap your arms around your knees. Grab opposite elbows. Rock back and forth. Massage your lower backs and your kidneys. Good job. Exhale that left leg all the way down. Flex your feet. Inhale as you interlace your fingers around that right knee or excuse me, at that right calf, not your knee. Don't, don't ever grab onto your joints at yoga. That's not a good idea. Exhale as you drag that leg in. Shoulders are back and down, flexing our feet, opening up your thigh and your hip as much as possible. Inhale out. Exhale, drag your knee in as far as you can. Again, remembering to drag your shoulders back and down. Inhale out. Exhale, drag it in. Inhale out. That right arm goes up overhead. And exhale as you push your knee over to the left. Again, maybe using a block or a bolster underneath your knee if this is in your practice. Again, we're in a full body twist. Dragging that left, excuse me, that right shoulder. Dragging that right hip back down towards the mat. Of course, that hip is not going to make it, but that's the direction that you're moving in. <clears throat> Inhale first. Exhale as you bend that left knee, grabbing onto your left foot. Again, you may use a strap. You may not want to do this. You don't have to move into a bind. Dragging that right shoulder back and down. Inhale first. Exhale as you extend that right leg, grab onto your toes. If this is in your practice, dragging that right hip again towards the mat. So this is a full body twist with two binds. Again, you can be wherever you want to. Any of these asanas is so healing. Just move to whatever your level is. And 
smile again. It's Thursday. So much exciting stuff happening this weekend. We have a meeting of Helping Parents Heal at Unity, which is going to be wonderful. With Sophia Makeham. She's going to be doing Reiki on the whole group of people that's going to be there, which is wonderful. Inhale those knees back to center. Draw them in for a hug. Again, rock back and forth. Massage your lower backs and your kidneys. Should feel really good. Good job. And then from here, let's go ahead and roll over onto your right side in the fetal position once again. Using the strength of your arms, come back to a seated position in Sukhasana. I'm going to go ahead and turn that down just slightly. Take your bolster, your blanket, maybe place it out in front of you. We're going to be moving forward, but before we do, let's go ahead and sit with our crown chakra directly above our root chakra. Again, all of the chakras are lining up in our body, placing the backs of our hands on our knees gently. Maybe making mudras with both sets of fingers. I'm going to find my crystal here. Make sure that it's at my throat chakra. Again, drag your shoulders back and down. Lift the crowns of your heads upward. Maybe close your eyes, gazing inward towards your third eye. One of the things that is really wonderful when you start meditation is having a drishti to gaze at a focal point. Maybe the candle in front of you. You don't have to have this. But as you gaze at the candle, when you close your eyes, you still see that flame as you're gazing at your third eye. I usually put this out a little bit farther. Again, as you breathe in, think, breathe in. And as you breathe out, think, breathe out. Still the monkey mind. Breathing in through our noses, breathing out as you use straw breathing. So making an O with your lips so that you breathe out more slowly. gratitude. Inhale those arms all the way up. Inhaling as much gratitude as possible and exhale as you release whatever does not serve you. Down to Anjali Mudra, down to prayer pose. Inhale all the way up. And exhale down. Inhale all the way up. Last time. Exhale as you release whatever does not serve you again. Good job. Let's move into some Kundalini breathing. Again, do this as much as possible. It's such a great thing to do throughout the day if you have time. You don't even have to be sitting in Tukasana. We're going to inhale as we open our hearts to the right 
squaring our shoulders to the right side. And we're going to exhale to the left, squaring those shoulders to the left side. We'll do this five times. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good job. I did a full moon meditation with a yogi by Zoom. Last year it was the end of the year actually and um, we did that for a full three minutes that breathing and I can tell you that first of all it opened up my spine it opened up all of the chakras you just keep doing it over and over again and it's something that can be very very instructive in moving things around inside that you don't need that's not what we're going to do today. Today we're going to go ahead and place our hands on that bolster or that blanket. Roll up into table. Again, in table, our shoulders are above our hips. Excuse me, our shoulders are above our wrists. Our hips are above our knees. And if we look between our legs, we shouldn't see our feet. We're going to start out by inhaling first and exhaling as you move those hips down towards your heels. Moving your arms out as far as you can into Balasana or Child's Pose. Maybe placing that third eye on either your blanket or on your mat, rocking it back and forth opening up your intuition as you do. Again, we're in Balasana, Child's Pose. Breathing in and out as we do. opening up our hips, opening up our thighs, and opening up that lower back region. Let's go ahead and inhale back up to table. And then exhale as you walk down on your elbows. So we're in puppy pose. Again, be gentle with yourselves. You can stay here, or you can walk those arms out in front of you. Opening up your shoulders and your heart, your spine. In heart to mat pose. Again, don't feel like you have to go all the way down. Again, in heart to mat pose. Yes, so we've gone through all of the chakras. This is entitled Eternal, Eternally by Stephen Halpern. I was thinking this doesn't sound like chakras anymore. Made it through. Inhale as you walk those hands back again. And while you're here on the mat in table, let's go ahead and inhale that right arm all the way up. 
Exhale as you thread it under, coming down onto that right shoulder. Keep your hips squared to the front of the room. Inhale, that left arm up. Bend your elbow, find that right hip crease. Again, and thread the needle, opening your heart to the side wall through the breath. Again, drag that left shoulder back and down as much as you can. In thread the needle. And smile. Again, it's Thursday. Inhale, that left arm up. Exhale down. Inhale, your right arm all the way up. And exhale down. Good job. Inhale, that left arm all the way up. Exhale as you thread it under, coming down onto that left shoulder. Inhale, that right arm up. Bend your elbow, find that right hip crease. Again, opening your hearts to the side wall through the breath. In, thread the needle. Inhale, that right arm up. Exhale down. Inhale, that left arm all the way up. And exhale down. Good job. And then from here, let's go ahead and <clears throat> we're going to place our knees together, curl our feet under and then slowly come back on our heels, placing the crowns of our heads on the mat or on the bolster, grabbing onto the soles of our feet and pulling ourselves in, in rabbit. Again, inhale as you pull, 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 pull. pull. And then exhale as you release, coming back up into table. Good job. And then from here, we're going to plant the palms of our hands into the mat. Curl your toes under, inhale first. Exhale all the way back to down dog. Ardha Mukha Shavasana. Possibly walking the dog, flattening out your backs. And again, maybe lifting one heel and then the other as you walk the dog. Good job. This will be our first and only downward dog of the day. Inhale that right leg all the way up. Three-legged dog split. Exhale as you swing it to the top left of the mat, right knee down, left knee down, left top of the foot down. Inhale as you walk your hands back. Again, we're moving into resting pigeon. Exhale as you walk them forward, as far as you can, coming down on to that left cheek, if this is in your practice. Again, we're opening up that right hip, Releasing any unwanted emotions that we may be storing there. If this is too much for you, you can always be on your backs with the knees bent. Taking that right foot, lifting it, placing it just under that left knee. And then interlacing your fingers around your left thigh, dragging that left thigh in, opening up that right hip as you do. So you can be in resting pigeon in many different places, up the wall, on your backs, on your bellies, in a chair. <laughs> There's lots of resting pigeons that are available. But all of them are some of the most healing 
asanas in yoga. Our hips are so important as we get older. Keeping our hips healthy allows us to keep our balance, to keep our bones from breaking as we move forward. Inhale as you walk those hands back again. <clears throat> Swing that left leg all the way around if you're on your bellies and if you're on your backs, just sit up. Swing that leg around. Draw that right heel in and that right elbow in. Inhale that left arm up and around. Find that right hip crease. Again, maybe take a bind in the Mariandrasana twist if this is in your practice. Bringing yourselves out, releasing any toxins, massaging our internal organs as we do, and smile again. Drag those shoulders back and down. Open your heart to the side wall through the breath. Inhale back to center. Extend your legs and shake them out. Come up to the tops of your mats in Malasana, Yogi Squat. So all four corners of your feet are growing into the mat. Lift your toes if you can. You might need a bolster underneath your heels. That's completely fine. If you've worn high heels for most of your life. Hands are at Anjali Mudra. Shoulders are back and down. Again, breathing in and out. Inhale from your root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. And exhale, excuse me, exhale down again. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Place your hands on the mat. Inhale, halfway up, pushing up. Again, we have flat backs, shoulders back and down, fingertips on the mat, looking towards the front of the room in Ardha Tadasana. Take a giant step back. This time with your right foot, walk that left foot all the way across. Left knee down, right knee down, right top of foot down. Again, you can move, be moving onto your backs. We're moving into resting pigeon. Inhale as you walk those hands back. Again to royal pigeon. And exhale as you move them forward. Coming down on that right cheek. If this is in your practice, you can be on your right cheek. You can be on your elbows. You can be on your left cheek. Wherever you are is perfect. We're opening up that left hip releasing any unwanted emotions that you may be storing there, allowing them to melt into the mat, into the floor, into the earth below, where they are recycled, regenerated, reborn into positive energy. Mother Earth is so good at this. In fact, it's interesting because I have a friend who's an Australian energy healer. And he was saying that Sedona is becoming so densely populated. There are so many tourists that go there. That those beautiful vortexes that used to be so healing get cluttered with lots and lots of energy that people are trying to leave there. And it, it seems to him that the earth is not capable of regenerating quickly enough in many cases. So um, I think it's really nice, especially in the summertime when it's very hot, when people um, maybe don't go to Sedona as much so that <laughs> has time to regenerate. But it is amazing how the earth takes care of us, is able to help us to heal and to take all of that negative energy and make it into positive energy. Inhale as you walk those hands back again, coming off on that left hip, 
swing your right leg all the way around. Right foot is parallel to your left thigh. Bring that left foot in and that left elbow in. Inhale, that right arm up and around. Find that left hip crease or possibly take a bind. In the Mariandrasana, twist. Opening your hearts to the side wall through the breath. Dragging those shoulders back and down. Inhale, back to center. Extend your legs and shake it out. And then bend your knees. Arms are out on either side of your knees. Inhale first. Exhale, inch by inch. Vertebra by vertebra down towards the mat. And when you get there, draw those knees in for a much deserved hug. Rock back and forth. Massage your lower backs and your kidneys. We're being regenerated, re energized. And then from here, if you have a block handy, take your block, place your heels just below your sit bones. Inhale as you push your hips up. Placing that block underneath your sacrum on the highest, second, or third levels. All of these blocks have three different levels. Again, we're in a supported bridge. You can be in a regular bridge with no block, just pushing those hips up, walking your shoulders under, clasping your hands in prayer, pushing with your heels into the mat to rise higher. You can also draw those arms overhead if you're in a supported bridge, walk your feet out in front of you. Again, in a T formation or a mushroom formation, oh, <clears throat> opening up that lower back region as much as possible. And smile. Slowly draw those arms back overhead. Walk your feet in. Inhale as you push your hips up, release the block, and then place it on the lowest level underneath your sacrum. Inhale those legs up above you, allowing the circulation to come back down to your vital organs, back down to your brain in a supported leg straight up. Again, this is so important to calm us down, to allow us to go to sleep at night. Having that circulation coming back down is so calming. Inhale first. Exhale as you bend your knees, placing your heels on the mat. Inhale as you push your hips up. Releasing the block and exhale down. Good job. Draw those knees in for a hug. Then cross that right leg over left. Wrap your feet. Arms are out east and west. Inhale first. Exhale all the way down to the left. Look over to the right and smile. We're getting rid of any toxins that may remain on that right side in your right obliques. <clears throat> Inhale back to center, unwrap, unwind, give yourselves a hug. Hug yourselves as many, as many times as you can throughout the day. Such an important thing to do. Cross that left leg over right, wrap your feet, arms are out east and west. Inhale first, exhale down to the right. Oh, that felt so good on this hip for me. Again, look off to the left, open up those left obliques for the last time, releasing whatever does not serve you. Remember to drink lots of water after any yoga practice with twists so that you can eliminate all of those toxins. Inhale, back to center, unwrap, unwind, give yourselves a hug. Inhale through your noses, side out, inhale. 
One more time. Inhale. And with that intention, allow your legs to come out as wide as the mat or wider. Arms are down beside your torso. Palms are up to receive, down to ground, starting to relax. Relax your toes, relax your feet, relax your ankles. <clears throat> relax your calves, relax your knees, relax your thighs. Relax your hips, relax your torsos, relax your fingers. We're starting again <clears throat> at the root chakra. Relax your hands, relax your wrists, relax your forearms. Relax your elbows, relax your upper arms, relax your shoulders. Relax your necks, relax your jaws, relax your cheeks. Relax your foreheads, relax the crowns of your heads. Just relax. Start to bring movement back to your fingers and your toes by wiggling your toes and gently touching each finger with your thumb. Reach your arms overhead, extend through your feet, giving yourselves a full body stretch and filling your lungs with your sweet, sweet breath. Then exhale as you draw those knees in for one final compassionate hug, rocking back and forth, massaging your lower backs and your kidneys. Slowly roll over to the right side in the fetal position and remain here for a few breaths. Then using the strength of your arms, come back to a seated position facing the front of the room. Legs are crossed. Hands are at Anjali Mudra. Heads are bowed in honor of your practices. From the place deep in my soul that I know to be pure and true, I bow to and honor that same place that resides within each of you. Thank you so much for coming to practice yoga with me. On this beautiful Thursday, please get out and do something wonderful and worthwhile today. Namaste. And then I'm going to go ahead and ring the gong to end practice. Always one of my favorite parts. because I probably won't figure out how to do that from otherwise. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.